Let's talk about the 2002 live-action Scooby-Doo. Most critics think that this film is not good, but guess what? They're wrong. They have completely missed the mark on this one, so let's find out why this film is actually a secret masterpiece. Throughout most of the 90s, the idea of this cartoon being adapted into live-action was in development hell, and it went through various names being attached to the project. There was a time when Jim Carrey was attached to play Shaggy, and actresses such as Sarah Gilbert, Melissa Milano, and Christina Ricci were all rumored at one point to play Velma. There was also another time Kevin Smith was attached to direct it, and for a while Mike Myers was gonna help write the script. Yeah, baby! Obviously, none of that happened, so what did? The director would eventually end up being this dude, who would later go on to direct movies such as Yours, Mine, and Ours, Beverly Hills Chihuahua, and two of the Smurfs movies. I wouldn't say he necessarily had a bad career post Scooby Doo, but I think it goes without question that the most successful career that came from Scooby Doo would be writer James Gunn, but we will get into him a bit later. The cast ended up being Freddie Prince Jr. as Fred, Sarah. Michelle Geller as Daphne, Linda Cardellini as Velma, and the incredibly talented Matthew Lillard as Shag. So now that we know who is behind this film, why is it so great? Let's start with the cast because it is actually incredible. Each of these four leads give incredible fish out of water performances that give a unique but respectful take on these classic characters living in our modern world. And I know I use the word modern here, but it's really just modern for 2002, which is my next point that this movie is peak early 2000s nostalgia. This movie does in fact age and date itself with cameos from Pamela. Anderson, Sugar Ray, the villain being Mr. Bean, and a soundtrack that includes MXPX and Simple Plan. This could not be more 2002. But guess what? The farther you get from that, the more iconic it feels. This island becomes a dated world, but it is so much fun for you as the audience to go back and explore that again. Speaking of 2002, the CGI here is actually pretty good considering the year. Sure, it's not perfect, but the way Scooby looks and is designed to fit into our world is a million times better than current cartoons being adapted into live action. So James Gunn, let's talk about him. As many know, he would go on to direct and be the creative mind behind Guardians of the Galaxy and the better Suicide Squad. Squad. Here he has a sneaky clever script that does not always get the credit it deserves. It is well documented that this film was originally supposed to be an R-rated comedy, poking fun at the idea of a live action cartoon. Rumors are that this version was created to some extent, and they had to clean up a lot of it in post, such as removing cleavage from some of the main characters, and even cutting a scene that apparently included Velma and Daphne making out in the forest. You can see how some of this humor translated into the final cut, but you can only imagine how much more was cut out of it that could have been. If nothing else, there are several Mary Jane references that I did not understand at all when I was 10 watching this. I'm Mary Jane. Like, that is my favorite name. As far as the plot goes, making Scrappy do evil was a great choice because clearly no one has ever liked it. But the moral of the story is what makes it truly genius. It goes beyond this fish out of water concept where these characters don't belong in this world, and it takes it a step past that and explores the idea of growing up and feeling like you don't fit into certain situations anymore. Many of the actors in this film up until this point have been typecast in their careers. Not only is Scrappy a surprising villain, but Rowan Atkinson also never really played an antagonist up until this film, so that was also a nice surprise. The four main actors is especially fit this idea of breaking beyond their acting archetype. All four of them cycled through various roles made for the teen slash young adult genre. Freddie Prince Jr. would share roles with Matthew Lillard in She's All That and Summer Catch, and also share the screen with his future wife, Sarah Michelle Gellar, in I Know What You Did Last Summer. Gellar also was best known from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and both her and Lillard were a part of the Scream franchise. Linda Carlini is the only one that didn't have any overlapping roles with anyone else here, and this works perfectly with Velma also feeling not a part of the gang. She was, however, known for her role in the short-lived cult classic Freaks and Geeks, which solidified her fitting into the same genre as the other leads. This the film highlights Mystery Inc. going through a transition in their life where they no longer want to play into the common tropes that they usually fall into. Fred doesn't want to be the one making decisions. Velma doesn't want to be just the girl with the glasses anymore. And Daphne is tired of being the damsel in distress. Each one of these characters has motivation both on and off screen for breaking out of their archetype and trying to become their own person. The film focuses on that idea, and it also adds this layer of appreciating nostalgia and the past without over idolizing it to the point where it becomes a crutch for growth. It's a brilliant take on adolescence, and for those reasons and so many more, this movie deserves to be a cult classic that is re examined for years to come. Also, Melvin Dew is the greatest cinematic character of all time. Melvin Dew? 